What's up? This is John from John Bats for Photography. And in my seven years of being a wedding photographer, I've seen so much advice given to starting photographers that honestly just rubs me the wrong way. So today I wanna talk about five myths that are told to starting photographers. Now, before we start, huge, huge disclaimer. Some of these things are very specific to wedding photography. And also, if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments, but let's not be over here hating, okay? Let's just talk about it and all learn from it. But these things I really cannot stand. And the first one is my most hated, which is your couples expect you to have the best of the best gear. I don't know where this came up that your clients or your couples expect you to have the best gear, but I, it just, it, it doesn't make sense. Now, if we're talking about commercial photography or something, or doing movies or media, that would make more sense because your clients probably know what gear you're using. But for wedding photography, your couple has absolutely no idea what you're using. Like really, when couples ask me what camera you use, and I start spouting off numbers and types and crop sensor versus full frame and these lenses, they have no idea what I'm talking about. So I don't know where this notion came up that your clients care that you have the best gear. For the most part, and I've seen this in practice, especially as a Fujifilm wedding photographer who shoots with crop sensor, couples just want good results. And that's how most people are in general. I'm like that with things that I don't totally understand either. Like if I call a plumber or a car mechanic, I don't care what wrench you're using, even if it's the best wrench ever created in the world. I don't care about your tools. I wanna know you can fix my thing and fix it well. I wanna know about your service. I like your service. I like how you treat me. That's what your couples care about. So if you're new and you have other photographers telling you you need to buy the best camera, just don't. Don't waste your money and spend the time getting good at your camera. And our next point rides right on the tails of the first one, which is you have to shoot full frame to do weddings. Now I know with this, I'm gonna create a whole earthquake and the whole photography community is gonna be like, John, what do you mean? <laughs> so this one I'm totally tired of hearing, especially as someone who started on full frame and moved over to crop sensor. And honestly, my weddings look way better now than when I was on full frame. You don't, you do not have to have full frame to shoot weddings. I've been doing it now for four years as the proof. Look at my website, everything is on a crop sensor. Again, just like with the first myth, a lot of this stuff has to do with your personal skill and understanding of your camera and light. The end result is what matters, not what you're using in the first place. So I know everyone says, oh, full frame's better in low light, which can be true, but if you know how to work your light, that's not a problem at all. So again, if you're starting in wedding photography and you don't have all the money to buy the latest and greatest and full frame craziness and all the expensive lenses, don't worry about it. But make sure you take the time to learn your camera and learn its limits. Because yes, full frame and crop sensor each has their own pros and cons and also each has their own limits. But one isn't technically better than the other. And I'm sure I just made everyone mad, but I wholeheartedly believe that, especially after shooting about 100 weddings on crop sensor. Going on with this trend of gear, everyone always says when you start wedding photography, you have to have a 24 to 70 and a 70 to 200, but you really don't. Again, and this goes back to what I said with everything, know your camera and know what you're shooting with, and know how to use it well. I've been shooting on prime lenses since I started wedding photography. I have never, ever used zoom lenses. So it's not any easier or harder using zoom versus prime. Honestly, it's a personal preference. So don't feel like you have to follow the crowd and do what everyone else is doing just to get the right results. You can do it with prime lenses and you can do it with zoom lenses as well. Also too, all of my favorite photographers, they mainly shoot prime only as well. So really, it works, it's fine. You can zoom with your feet and still have great wedding results. Again, I've been doing it for like seven years now. It's really not a problem. You don't have to get those zoom lenses. And this one is a big one. Here it is, here's the controversy, y'all ready? You don't have to shoot off-camera flash. Yes, I said it. You don't have to, you don't. 
Now, disclaimer, you definitely need to understand off-camera flash and be able to do it when you have to. And you do need to understand flash in general and know how to use light and mold light. But to have to do off-camera flash is not necessary. I've been doing it for seven years without off-camera flash. Yes, that is correct. At my weddings, I always use the flash on my camera and I'm able to get great results and I have no problems with my results at all either. Honestly too, personally, I don't like the look of off-camera flash during receptions because it leaves a lot of like crazy jagged shadows that like shoot across the whole screen. I'm just not a fan. Or you always see like a light stand in the back with a big flash. I don't like it. I don't like it. And that is okay to each their own. You don't have to follow the crowd. And that's the main point of this video is that just because everyone is telling you that there's a certain way to do something doesn't necessarily mean that it's the only way. Now, if you're curious how I kind of shoot my weddings without off-camera flash, I do have a couple videos up above that you can check out that talk about how I use flash at receptions. But again, you don't have to use off-camera flash. But when I get into a situation where I absolutely need it, I do use off-camera flash. So I'm not saying don't ever use it, but you don't have to have, like that's the only way you shoot, you don't have to. And last but not least, charging lower prices kills the market. Y'all, this is one of the biggest myths and lies that I've seen within wedding photography. And let me explain a little bit to you why this is. Your pricing first and foremost should be based on your experience, skill level, and also your brand. Not, you have to charge this much just because that's what the market does. And I've seen it in so many Facebook groups, people just going in on photographers like, you need to charge more, you need to charge more. Bro, if they're just starting and they're new and they've only done like five weddings, no, they do not need to charge more because what's gonna happen is they're gonna charge more, they're gonna get a client who wants that more price of experience and they're not gonna get the experience and the couple is gonna be mad and they're gonna leave one star reviews and it's gonna destroy the photographer. Charge the prices for where you're at and that is okay that your prices might be cheaper because you know what? You're still not gonna get all of the business. The way I like to explain it is Ferrari's not losing any business because Hyundai's over here with a $10,000 car. And why is that? Because the clients who wanna pay for that experience in that car are gonna pay for it. And it's the same for wedding photography. So if you have years and years of wedding photography, you've really honed in on your brand, you know how to treat your couples, you have such a great experience and people are knocking down your doors, yes, you should be charging a lot and people will pay it. There's a client for everybody. So just because Smojo down the street is charging 500 bucks for wedding photography doesn't mean that you're gonna lose business. And if you are losing business, what that really means is that you're not hitting the right target market. You're basically serving cheaper clients trying to make them pay more and just expect it to be that way. Again, if I want an Apple computer, I'm not gonna go look at a Dell and be like, ooh, that Dell's only $300 versus this $2,000 Mac mini. No. I want the Mac mini. I want the MacBook Pro. The Dell doesn't matter to me. And it's the same with the wedding market. So no, they're not bringing the price down. The only people who are ever bringing the price down is when it comes to like client and commercial work. Cause especially, you know, if a business is like, hey, we're gonna pay $10,000 for this commercial, but Smojo comes along who can do good work. It's like, I'll do it for 500. Yes, that hurts the market. But in wedding photography, there's millions of people getting married. You need to work on your brand and that's why you're not booking at your prices. Not because someone else has cheaper prices. So those are the five myths that just totally irk me that people be telling new photographers. At the end of the day, take the time to practice, take the time to learn, take the time to get good and to serve your clients well and you will do awesome. And you don't have to follow the exact rules to get there. Find yourself a mentor and someone who can teach you the ropes and show you the real world experience of weddings, not just the here and say there of this and that and this is how it has to be and whatever. Because as you've seen from my wedding videos, which y'all can check out up above, I don't follow the normal format and I've been doing fine for seven to eight years now. So again, this is not to hate on anyone, no offense to anyone who does these things, 
What I really wanna do is encourage new photographers because when older photographers come in and start putting all this stuff on newer photographers, sometimes it can derail them. If you have any other starting myths that you hear are told to new photographers, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more information on wedding photography and being a creative entrepreneur. I'll catch y'all next time. All right, peace.